Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Bob. Today, we're going to be taking another trip to an island nation um, in the Caribbean, and today we're going to be doing Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican chicken with rice, or Puerto, Puerto, Puerto? No, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that, to be honest. It's the first time I've actually tried to say that out loud. <laughs> Puerto Rico, there you go. Um, so we're going to have chicken and rice from Puerto Rico. Um, the more I say that, the more it doesn't sound right, but okay, we'll just roll with that for now. Um, so this dish is a nice, simple dish. One pot, cheap, simple to make, happy as you like. And what we need to be doing today is just preparing a bunch of ingredients. So as you can see here, I've got two red onions. Now you can use normal onions, but I want to use some red onions to get a bit of color in this dish today. I want to get a bit of a, a bit of vibrancy. I'm going to use frozen chicken. The reason why I'm going to use frozen chicken is because you're supposed to use drumsticks of this. But to be honest, it's quite late in the evening tonight. I want a nice quick dish that I can do quickly. So, chicken breast, sliced, frozen, cooked from frozen, happy days. Salt. Now this isn't any old salt, this is a garlic salt blend I've made. So it's got oregano, garlic powder, obviously salt, which I've finely mashed with a pestle and mortar and a bit of all-purpose seasoning. So it's kind of like a, uh, a super spice blend, if you will. I've also got turmeric, which will be going in there today. All spice, so going for those warm flavors. Bit of all-purpose seasoning, which you'll find a lot of in Caribbean cooking. Bay leaves. Peppercorns. Fresh thyme. Garlic and ginger paste. The old famous olive oil with garlic in it. Lime juice. And finally, peppers. So, to get this started, it's really simple. All we need to actually do is just add a little bit of a spice blend to the chicken. It's not even a spice blend really, it's just a, uh, a bit of all-purpose seasoning, salt and pepper really. Um, so, all you need to do is take your chicken, dump it in a bowl. Now, you, as I say, you can do this with uh, chicken drumsticks, that's completely fine. In fact, that's the way you should do it. So at this point, you'd have chicken drumsticks in there. I'm going to do it with normal chicken uh, breast. It is a way to save a bit of time. Um, here I also have some rice which I've washed. Uh, it's bas uh, basmati rice, it's washing, it's been washed and it's now drying away here. Any residual moisture will uh, drop down. So, first things first, again, I'm not gonna measure. That's not how I roll here. So a little bit of all-purpose seasoning. A sprinkle of salt. Which bear in mind, it's got all-purpose seasoning in itself, so. And it's got a bit of oregano. It's not called for in the rest of the oregano, but to be honest, it's a nice flavor. And then a bit of pepper. So nice and simple. And I've got clean hands. So it's gonna go in there now, and I'm just gonna combine this, like so. At this point, actually, what we could probably do is to bring it a little bit along the way, Put a tiny splash of olive oil in there. Tiny little splash, just a suggestion more than anything. And that'll just help those um, those spices, well, those flavorings really, cling to the chicken. And that's that really. So it's just chicken infused with all-purpose seasoning, salt and pepper. Nice and simple. So we'll set that to one side and we'll get started with our onion. So again, Nice sharp chef's knife. I've got a new one recently. Um, so it comes with a little sleeve. So <laughs> it's a lot sharper than my previous one. So top and tail, the onions. And then slice through the middle after you lay it on its front. Remove the skin. And then set that aside. And then, again, we're gonna dice it. 
So, but rather than using the conventional method I did before, I'm just gonna slice it into ringlets. Again, using that method of creating a little guard and rocking. So I'm gonna create it into little slices, very, very roughly, and that's a bit too thick. Same with this one. And then we'll give the same treatment to this onion here. Now, there's nothing wrong with using frozen vegetables. For me, it locks in a lot of the flavor, locks in a lot of the freshness. And it's very, very good if like myself, you're a family man or a family woman, or just generally busy in, in general, and you haven't got time to be cooking left, right and center all day. But you still want to have interesting, unique meals which don't take too long to cook. Now, again, I'm gonna use the, um, air, the pressure cooker today, but just bear in mind, it's the same process, really. We can just do this all in a pan and then we can cover it. The only reason why I'm using an, a, a pressure cooker is purely for speed, because I've got a hum hungry family I need to feed tonight. And when you've got a hungry family, speed is the key. But I certainly wouldn't say you need to have a pressure cooker in order to make this at all. Um, as long as you've got a frying pan, nice fitting, nice tight fitting lid, or even just a bit of tin foil that you can create a little lid out of, or even just a plate, anything will work really. As long as you're safe and careful with it. Then um, yeah, it's about locking in that steam, locking in that moisture and letting the flavors do the trick, letting them do the work. So as you can see there, I sliced it and then literally I just used the weight of the knife to roughly chop it. And that's another alternative as well to the previous method I showed in my first video for the Jamaican lamb curry. And again, just very carefully, this is a very sharp knife. I'm gonna do that and waste not, want not. So now we have our chopped onions. So. The next job is to get our air fryer. Air fryer, I'm obsessed with that word. It's not an air fryer, it's a pressure cooker. So the next job is to get the pressure cooker up and running. So I'm just gonna move a few bit, bits, bits around quickly and quickly discard of my waste as well because it's a lot easier to cook in a kitchen where you're cleaning up after yourself as you go along. It makes life a lot easier and my wires decided to get stuck. Here we go. Cool. So I'm just going to give this a little twirly-whirly over here. So you can see the deal. I'll try and get a nice shot this time. I, I'm aware that I didn't get the uh, the best of shots this time. And I love that. It really just makes a cool noise. I never get bored of that. <laughs> so whilst we're putting the rubbish away, I'm going to start putting this on saute mode and let that do its thing quickly. And there we go, it's just clicked into place. So I'm gonna go in with a tablespoon of olive oil. And the reason why I say tablespoon is because I'm trying to cut back on the fat usage but I'm not a big lover of them spray oils. I try and avoid them, I do have some, but I do try and avoid them if I can, because I do tend to find that they wreak havoc on my pans. I don't know why. My pans just don't seem to like them very much. So now I've done that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in this chicken and start browning it off. And all we're looking to do here is get this ever so slightly Nice little brown colour. Now, if you are using um, your chicken drumsticks, which I'd highly recommend, it'll give it a lot more flavour. Um, make sure that the actual skin itself is nice and you know brown, nice and golden, and then we can kind of proceed from there. So, in the background, I've also been preparing some chicken stock. So you can see here, I've got some fresh chicken stock on the go as well, that we can add to that shortly. So the idea here is really to get the chicken nice and brown. 
Now this will be the perfect time. Let's find some nice Caribbean music. You're in the kitchen, you're chilling out, you've got your mobile phone, you've got a bit of Caribbean music, you know. And I'm pretty sure Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico is in the Caribbean, or the Caribbean, depending on how you like to say it. Um, I don't know a huge deal about Puerto Rico, to be honest. Um, but I do know that it's got a lot of um, Spanish influence in its food. The language is Spanish. So uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of Spanish influence in its food. and uh, But also it retains that kind of Caribbean identity as well. Um, you've got the unique flavours and the spices. So the idea here is to get a nice tinge on the uh, chicken here. Not just that, but we're also looking to season the oil that we have in here with the chicken flavor. That's quite important really, because we're gonna impart that flavor onto our onions and peppers shortly. Okay, and now the chicken's got a nice bit of uh, color on it. We're now gonna go ahead and add in the onions and the peppers. And what will happen here is that the remaining oil will be absorbed into the peppers and the onions and it will create this wonderful flavour. And it's just the sponge of flavour this is. The best way to describe it. So then we go over our lovely sliced onion. And again, you don't need to use red onion, but I want a variety of colour in this dish. I want a bit of attitude in this dish today. And we're going to go in with a handful of mixed peppers as well. So, nice colours here going on. And sign of good food, in my opinion, is food that's colourful. That's when you know it's good for you. So I get it all stirred in, let all these flavours mingle and infuse, get to know each other. Look at them colours, that's beautiful. I really hope you can appreciate them colours as much as I can. Though, to be honest, the lighting in this room is dulling it slightly. Um, so maybe you can't see, but we've got a variety of colours here. And it's true to work, my... Uh, my uh what do you call them again um kettle <laughs> i haven't got a normal kettle though. i've got one of those water dispenser kettles so they're quite useful but you do have to constantly fill them up if you've got a family of five like i have so now we're just going to let these flavors combine together and we can think about getting these spices in as well so whilst they're softening we can get in the all spice turmeric ginger garlic and we could also at this point add a bit of chili now, my wife did say that she doesn't mind a little bit of a chili kick. So I'm going to be kind to her and I'm going to put in a very small amount, a very liberal dosage. You know, for most people, this would be humorous. But here's a couple of chili flakes to bring a bit of warmth to the party for her. Hopefully she don't mind it. Because uh, basically I made a chili con carne the other night. I was going to film it. I didn't get around to doing it. It was quite late on, um, but I didn't end up filming it because we just wanted to crack on with it really and get it done, but it, I will definitely record it. It was chilli bowls, so I made bowls out of tortillas which held the chilli in and put all sorts of goodies in it. It was really nice, but my wife turned around to me and said, well, this is really nice, but I wouldn't mind a little bit of chilli in it. And I couldn't believe my ears when I heard her say that because she is not a fan of chilli at all. She really isn't. Um, but I think certain dishes, if they're done right, a little bit of chilli kick can really add a bit of identity. So I've just gone in there with the ginger garlic paste as well. About a teaspoon. You don't want to go too crazy on that, especially if uh, you plan on kissing anyone that night. Because, uh, as we all know, garlic is the, uh, is the ultimate flavour but it's also the ultimate smell that sticks around. And it certainly sticks around in your mouth with, with your breath as well. I must uh, always smell garlic, if that's the case, because I, I truly do, truly do love the stuff. So now we can start thinking about adding our spices and I will measure these because you've got to be careful with these spices. Now, turmeric and allspice are what I like to call pungent spices. And by that, I mean that they are very, very 
pronounced. You don't need to go far with them. So I'm going to put in about, just trying to see if the camera can see that, here we go, about half a teaspoon roughly of turmeric. <clears throat> and that'll give it a nice golden colour. I'm also going to go in with the same, so half a teaspoon of ground allspice. And this will give it a nice warm flavour. And it will also give the kitchen a nice smell. <clears throat> so as I like to do this, I like to also gather together what I've used so far. So I can be a little bit more familiar with uh, what I've used and, and not attempt to use them again. Uh, so I'm just gathering them all together quickly. Uh, we've also got thyme. Now the trick with thyme really is just to strip off the leaves. So here we have a, it's called a sprig. So that's a sprig of thyme. And what we literally want to do is we want to take these leaves. And we kind of got to work our way backwards against them like this and kind of sprinkle them in. Now thyme is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful herb. Very, very fragrant. Very, very, it just, it just transforms a dish. It really does. It just takes it onto another level. And it's a staple of Caribbean cooking. Um, you find it in a lot of uh, Jamaican food. Um, so, of course, it's always useful to have a bit of time in the house and give yourself some time. Oh, God, I've really, that's an overdone joke, that is. I probably, uh, <laughs> probably could have left that in there. Yeah, he's that joke, but there you go. <laughs> so, stripping off these little thyme leaves in here. There's no hard and fast rule about this. It's just how much thyme you like. I love thyme. And I want it to really stand out, so I'm going to use a good amount myself. This is all preferential. If you want that herby kind of twang to really work its way through the rice, then by all means, add in a, a liberal amount. There's a couple of sprigs of thyme in there. I've shaved off and wow 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 the smell absolutely beautiful very very good and those onions are starting to soften so is the uh so are the peppers chicken's really absorbing those flavors now and it's also taking on the color of the turmeric as well now another thing you can put into this dish is olives now i must admit i am not a fan of olives not one bit but you can add olives in at this point if you want them slightly soft or you can garnish them on top at the end if you like as well again kitchens you know i like to take the rules out of cooking somewhat i think if you impose too many rules on yourself you won't really truly get to enjoy what cooking's all about and it's all about filling the flight filling filling the kitchen with great smells entertaining people and exploring new tastes i mean one thing I realised living in England is that, you know, it's a running joke, but our food isn't well known for being the best in the world. But the, another thing, we, we rely upon, a lot upon um, food from other, other nations. And for me, that tends to kind of mean that it's either Chinese, Indian, Italian, that kind of stuff. Mexican sometimes. But you don't see a lot of Puerto Rican or Ethiopian or Nigerian. You don't, you don't see much of that unless it's kind of contextual. Unless yeah, there's an area where people are living and there's a lot of uh, people from that nation in that area. And you know, there's regions of there's places in London I love to visit because there's a great deal of uh, food from various African countries. Um, I go to Shepherd's Bush quite a lot to try the Ethiopian food and everyone there is so friendly in the Ethiopian restaurants. They can't do enough for you. Really warm, caring people. I really do love the atmosphere of an Ethiopian restaurant. So if you're ever in the London area or nearby and you have a chance to visit an Ethiopian restaurant, I'd say go to Shepherd's Bush. And there's a few down there. I won't kind of name drop any specific ones. Just go and have a little look around and, and man it's such a lovely family environment it really is i, I couldn't recommend it enough so let's put a bit of lime in there that's going to add a nice little twang you know you've got the you've got all sorts going on in this dish you know puerto rico really you know they know how to do their thing man so what we're going to do now is we're going to stick in our rice and we're going to let this rice absorb all of this flavor here 
They don't need a huge deal either because rice expands. And I want a higher ratio of chicken and vegetables to rice. You know, I want the chicken and vegetables to do the work, but I want the rice to be in there as well. Just adding a little bit of, uh, I call it status, statity or statity. I don't know what the word is, but it means it keeps you full basically. So that's a flavor explosion going on in there now. Let's add to that by putting in some chicken stock. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go slightly over the rice. Like so. And that was about 600 mils. I just wanna go ever so slightly over that rice. Now again, we're gonna follow the same rules that we do with rice. You may have seen in my previous video where the rule is you bring it to the boil and then you turn it down and you let it simmer for about 20 minutes. <clears throat> so bring it all the way up, turn it all the way down, cover it with a lid and let it simmer. Now in the pressure cooker, I don't need to do that. I've got a setting here which is called rice. It's gonna reenact the exact same thing. So once it gets to the boil, I'm gonna put the lid on, let it pressure cook, and then I'm gonna simply take it out and enjoy it. So that is pretty much it. That's all you've gotta do. Excuse your wooden spoon, I'm not cooking you tonight. So that's all that it takes to do this Puerto Rico chicken and rice. It's such a simple dish flavorful, smells great. You can adjust the seasonings afterwards. Uh, you can serve it with some, um, uh, some lime wedges, some coriander, all sorts of different things. Depends what really takes your fancy. You could even serve this rice without the chicken in it as a side dish to chicken. So there's so many things you can do with it. With the chicken inside, it really absorbs them flavors. And with that chicken stock added into it as well, it's just a flavor, flavor combination, so to speak. So, um, I'm going to go ahead, eat this, and then come back and give you my thoughts after the video, as I always do. So, see you shortly. So, I'll do what I forgot to perhaps do last time, um, and I will show you the outcome of the meal. So, that's what we've got. Fluffy rice with chicken, peppers, um, a nice golden yellow colour, and various bits of colour inside there. Um, I may have forgot to add, but... You need to include some bay leaves in there. I did uh, get them out ready. Um, in terms of the smells currently, it smells incredible. Very, very flavorful. Um, plenty of rice there for me and the family. Um, so yeah, I'll tuck into that shortly and then uh, I'll give you my thoughts. So I think it's gonna need a little bit more seasoning. I think some of that seasoning was lost um, during the uh, boiling process, but yeah, a little bit more seasoning, a little bit of all purpose, and I think that'll be good to go. Okay. So here's the finished product. So <laughs> a little bit bad of me really, but I like to put a little splodge of mayonnaise on mine. And there's two tablespoons there, so roughly 70 calories because it's like mayonnaise. I've also finished off a sprinkling of paprika and some more chili flakes. So what I'm gonna do is try it on its own without any of the extra additional seasonings. Give you my thoughts and then I'll try it with the uh, the added extras. Also put a sprinkling of lime on this as well. My mouth is literally salivating. <laughs> I can't wait. Let's try it. Mmm, yes, yeah, very good. You got the tartness from the, the lime juice. I think finishing off with lime juice was a great idea. You've got the chicken stock flavor that's really coming through. You've got an ever such a slight, like, hint of spice in the background, because um, there was chili in there before. Uh, let's get a bit of pepper, and let's try and get a bit of chicken as well. In fact, let's just get a whole bite. Let's just get a, let's get a real bite. And try and fish for some chicken in here. I think I'll give the majority of it to my wife, lucky lady. There we go, I found a bit there. All right, let's give it a go. Mmm, yeah, that's what it needed. Mayonnaise is a must. Really does add to it. So, my thoughts, really well flavoured, really, really nice seasonings. Um, definitely recommend, I'd say maybe mm, 8 out of 10 for this one. Um, needs a bit more. I think the actual flavours themselves are just, again, it's just two two different spices in there, so it needs a little bit more. But really, you uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck. So yeah, I'm I'm quite pleased with this recipe. Do get it going and uh, let me know what you all think. Thank you very much and have a great day. Take care, people.